how long for person? This is Anton, and well, I'm actually currently in between studios, mostly because my old place got flooded, and so I have to record a few videos somewhere else. But because I also lost a bunch of footage and essentially lost my hard drives, I had to quickly come up with some additional videos, including this one, on various scientific topics that I personally find super interesting, but never got to explore. And well, in this video we're going to discuss something that I sort of came up with on the way here, as I was driving, and as I was looking at the wheels. As the title of the video suggests, we're going to discuss the wheel. Okay, okay, I know, kind of cheesy and stuff, but bear with me. Because there is a really recent research that surprisingly discovers something we might have not known before. It potentially discovers a very unusual origin of the wheel as the concept, and it's absolutely not what anyone expected. And this is based on a lot of archaeological evidence, and even scientific and engineering evidence, where scientists managed to provide a relatively accurate model, basically showing us where the wheel possibly came from. And so, in this video we're going to discuss the humanity's most fundamental invention. Possibly the most important invention in the early history, that might sound kind of simple and kind of obvious today, really isn't. Especially because, if you were to look at the history of humanity, the wheel, as a concept, is technically a relatively new invention. But for a very long time, well, really for centuries, historians and archaeologists pondered and argued on who actually invented the wheel and where did it really come from. And the answer turns out to be kind of fascinating, but also very unexpected. In essence, kind of also showing us how a lot of inventions came to be, and how even early humanity learned to innovate in some really bizarre ways. With most of this based on a combination of computer simulations and analysis, and of course, archaeological evidence from thousands of years ago. But here let's also start with some of the previous assumptions, based on the evidence from various early cultures. So, turns out, it was not Egyptians, it was not Babylonians, and it was not any of the ancient cultures living in the Middle East that you'd think would be the ones inventing this crucial tool. I mean, we do have depictions of different wheels from ancient Sumerians, for example. This is from approximately 4500 years ago, but there is no evidence that they were the first. We also know that wheels were invented independently in Mesoamerica or in the New World, but none of this had any practical use. And well, according to Wikipedia, this is the oldest wheel known to us. This is the Ljubljana Marches wheel that seems to be about 5100 years old. This would be in the modern day Slovenia. And in this case there is one relatively old research that scientists only started talking about again in the relatively recent times. Now here you can find these studies in the description below, but in essence at least one of the studies seems to explore the idea of the wheel coming from the 4th millennium BC from Europe. This would be approximately 6,000 years ago, and it seems to have come as a result of early mining. Now here we actually have to first explore the idea behind how this probably started and why it kind of makes sense. And well first, let's ignore the wheel and let's start with the actual concept involved in this and how the early humans potentially thought about it. Now this is also based on some of the earliest evidence, but today archaeologists believe that most of this extremely likely started with simple rollers. Except that the problem with rollers is that you always have to carry them back to the front, and this was probably not a very effective way to transport things on any terrain that was not even. And so overall, rollers are just not very practical. But a lot of these new theories propose that it very likely started with a roller, but then as a result of friction and basically physics, something else started to happen. And here this is based on quite a lot of different evidence. More than 150 different wagons have been discovered in certain regions in Europe that all resembled something like this, but with different levels of complexity. In essence showing a kind of an evolutionary process of how these wheels changed over time. And all this was from a culture most of us have probably never heard of before. They're referred to as Bolares culture. Part of the Baden culture you see right here, marked in violet. And this was a culture living mostly in the central and the southern Europe, renowned for their extremely advanced pottery. And here we have the oldest evidence for actual wheeled objects, and specifically wagons, including ceramic wagons or wagon-shaped pottery, sometimes made with a handle. Although obviously why they are made this way, nobody knows. And though no actual wagons have been discovered, 
So far, the presence of wheeled objects and the presence of the pottery depicting wagons suggest that they were most likely able to create them and to use them for something. But these were definitely not toys. Mostly because on their surface there was also a kind of an engraving resembling a typical basket very often used by miners in this exact era. And so here archaeologists suggest that there is a direct link between mining operations and these unusual wagons. In other words, there is a kind of an indirect evidence for the use of these first wheels in order to transport something that was being mined, with the basic depiction being something like this. But the question is, how did these early miners manage to create this without advanced scientific knowledge and moreover made them almost perfect? And well here the suggestion is that this was probably kind of by accident, but also through the process of trial and error. And it probably all started with rollers. But in order to make these rollers more functional, the first modification had to be the cart itself. These carts had to have some kind of a socket in order to hold rollers in place so you wouldn't have to move them all the time. And this of course meant that you only had to use two rollers instead of using a bunch of them, making things a lot more efficient. And though this was probably the first start, eventually, completely by accident, or possibly intentionally, these rollers started to kind of advance and change their shape, becoming thinner and thinner. And at first it might have been just the result of friction. As these rollers were spinning, the friction between the sockets and the roller started to make the axle just a little bit thinner. Likewise, because this was inside the mine, the surface was not even and there were probably a bunch of rocks, and so there's a possibility that maybe some of these early miners started to make the axle just a little bit thinner in order to have it pass above the rocks and in order to help them roll on somewhat uneven surfaces. And so trial after trial and roller after roller, we eventually got something thinner and thinner that started to resemble a wheel and an axle. And that's of course kind of what we get here in some of these wagon models as well. Because here we do have an axle and a wheel and not a roller at all. But in order to test this hypothesis, researchers behind the recent study, the study by James, Ella Koch and Bouye, decided to examine this idea and simulate it using computer models. And the point was to start with a roller and then simulate the evolution of the roller into an actual wheel. And so here the algorithm modeled hundreds of different roller shapes, checking for mechanical advantage and structural strength, eventually evolving into the final shape that was essentially perfect. And pretty much every single time, it always ended up with a wheel and an axle. This was the optimal design. With the results of the simulation suggesting that the wheel was basically the perfect solution, and it's quite likely that these early civilizations managed to create this completely independently through trial and error. But this was probably a very long gradual process and did not happen right away. Either way, eventually, this would make these carts easier to push and these wheels much more efficient. And so according to the study and the explanation based on this computer model, there was no single invention moment. This was basically not some kind of a eureka. This was a very gradual process, resulting from a continuous accumulation of very small, very practical improvements, most likely the result of the environment, which was possibly not very easy to work in. So in this case, if this was a mine, it would make a lot of sense. A typical roller would not work very well inside the mine, so here you have to evolve something to make things just a little bit better. But obviously the story of the wheel does not just end with the Carpathian miners, because the evolution of the wheel continued for many millennia. And even after these early innovations, as early as 200 years ago, a French bicycle mechanic managed to create something even more efficient. You can read about this in The Wheel by Richard Boulier, but here this was the invention of the radial ball bearings. Something that's conceptually identical to rollers, but in this case it's a rolling interface around the axle that prevents friction, bringing the wheel's evolution full circle. And even that is not the end of the story, because as recently as just a decade ago, NASA came up with even better wheels. And so here, since the beginning of the lunar exploration, with the lunar surface requiring a completely different way of transportation, NASA had to develop super elastic and airless tires, mostly because normal tires would just pop in the vacuum of space. With some of the newer wheels developed with the memory alloys, 
also known as SMAs or shape memory alloys, with one good example known as nitinol. That's because it's made out of nickel and titanium. And so these new tires can usually survive a lot more pressure, a lot more strain, and will always revert to their initial shape while also not being puncturable, containing nothing inside, and basically being perfect for all other extraterrestrial locations. And so even though some of the previous designs, such as the ones used on Mars, eventually broke, these newly designed shape memory alloy tires can actually survive pretty much any condition. Which is technically why one day you'll probably be able to buy them and use them in a regular vehicle, once they become cheap enough. At least for now, they are just a little bit expensive. And so in essence here, the evolution of wheel has not stopped yet, with the engineers continuously improving the design and trying to create something that's perfect. Something that never breaks, something that works in all conditions, and something that can be applied to pretty much anything that requires wheels. We're not there yet, but because there's been so many advances in the last 10 years, chances are that in the next few decades, we're actually going to start seeing some of these in the use on the roads. Which essentially suggests that the evolution of the wheel has been actively going on for over 5,000 years since those early wheels in the Carpathian Mountains. And so even though we often assume that some of the groundbreaking technologies emerge in a single flash, basically a eureka moment, here this investigation of the concept of the wheel suggests otherwise. It suggests that wheels went through countless quiet revolutions, most likely driven by practical needs and a continuous quest for improvement. And something that seems to agree with the archaeological evidence. And so that's the story of the wheel. But as I mentioned, because the story hasn't finished yet, We'll probably come back and discuss this more once there are some updates, or once someone else comes up with some incredible wheel technology that just blows everything away. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, come back tomorrow to learn something else, maybe support this channel on Patreon where you can find additional videos, videos you might have not seen before, and videos without ads, or by joining the channel membership that contains early access and a few more features. Or maybe by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Either way, stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, Bye-bye.